What you're gonna see is one of the most craziest things in the automotive sector. This is Rockman Industries. They are the auto component arm of the $6 billion hero group. And today, we're at their largest manufacturing plant in Tirupati. We've been through 40 acres of this factory. Factory to aage, size for the industrial kar liya humne. Bohut chalna pad raha hai. To understand the seven step process on how raw aluminium is converted into a durable four wheel alloy. This is the only plant right now which has got close to 2 million capacity of four wheeler alloy vehicles. So our products are right now going to Germany, the US, to Mexico, France, we're supplying to Slovenia. Whether you're a car enthusiast, a tech lover, or just curious about how things are made, this video will break down the entire process on how raw materials are converted into a durable alloy wheel. So before we go to Tirupati, let's understand what Rockman actually does. We are the number one manufacturer in the country of wheels for motorcycle and scooters. So we have got two different, I would say, technologies. One is casting technology and another is chains for motorcycle and scooters. And when it comes to casting, there are three major processes. So one is high pressure die casting, another is low pressure die casting, and another is gravity die casting. So in high pressure die casting, molten aluminium is injected into a steel mold under extreme pressures. This high pressure results in dense and strong wheels but requires sophisticated machinery making it more expensive. Whereas low pressure die casting is when Molten aluminium is pushed into the mold under controlled but lower pressures. This process offers better control over metal flow, reducing defects and improving structural integrity. And lastly, gravity die casting relies on gravity to pour molten aluminium into a metal mold. It's cost effective and suitable for intricate design. We use these technologies for manufacturing different kind of uh, engine components for two-wheeler as well as passenger car. Also, a major portion of uh, this technology goes into manufacturing alloy wheels. Okay, let's take a step back for a second. Rockman pivoted to manufacturing alloy wheels in 2014. However, back in 1960, when the company was established, they started off by manufacturing cycle chain. The story of Rockman starts when the story of industrialization uh, started in the country post the independence. Post independence, there were very few manufacturing that was taking place and uh, bicycle was the basic mode of conveyance for the people. There was a time in the country when only enough bicycles could get produced as there was availability of a few critical components such as bicycle chains, hubs, freewheels, which were technology products at that time. And they used to come in from Germany, they used to come in from England. If a shipment got late for those weeks or months, there was no cycle production. So to reduce that dependence, the idea was to look at setting up and bringing in these technologies. This is Mr. Suman Kant Munjal and Ujwal Munjal, the son and grandson of Mr. Bridge Mohan Lal Munjal. Bridge Mohan Lal Munjal was one of the four Munjal brothers who started the Hero Group. And in 1956, when Hero was set up by Munjal brothers, they were making the most of the parts for bicycle and rest they were depending on uh, either imports or available locally. So they decided that they will have a component company separate than Hero so that it could feed their demand as well as the demand of the other bicycle makers and replacement market in the country. And they decided to start with bicycle chains. And uh, my father at that time visited uh, Germany in 1959 and imported a bicycle chain manufacturing plant, which was the beginning of the Rockman. And in 1961, 13th April, which is the most auspicious day for the entire hero group and even Rockman, the first production started in 1961 on 13th April. But about four or five years ago, we did an internal review and what we found was 65% of our business at Rockman was dependent on the internal combustion engine. You know, and we started to look at opportunities. Where is it that we can take the business? We already had a small part of our business as alloy wheels. And we looked took, th took that as a challenge. And today, 60% of our revenue comes from alloy wheels. 60% of Rockman's revenue is generated through alloy wheels. Since it's such a big part, let's go on and understand how they're actually made. So... We are right now at the Tirupati plant of Rockman, which is one of the largest plants. So this has been strategically located to cater to our four-wheeler customers around the south because most of them are located around this area. So could you please tell us a brief about you know, how the entire process here at this yeah. plant or at Rockman works from you? Know, right. Going from a raw material to a finished product, how does that journey look like? So alloy wheels, four-wheelers, you know, it's got a very huge requirement 
of very high mechanical property. There is an elongation, there is an impact load, there is a breaking load, there is a fatigue load. So to cater to all those requirements, there is a special alloy. So here it's A356. So this is uh, the ingot. You see A356. So this is melted in the melting furnaces. The aluminum ingot, this is weighed here and the weights are recorded and then this is charged through the elevator then it goes inside the melting furnace it is the output in form of molten metal and that's the temperature of this? the molten metal is 745 so see after you get the molten metal there is a cleaning process. This cleaning process is essential because as we have our molten metal, which is still hot, hydrogen can dissolve into it, forming bubbles on the outer surface as it starts to cool down. These bubbles can create weak spots, compromising on the wheel strength and durability. So after the molten metal is transferred on the ladder, it comes to this machine. Now, this is a low pressure die casting machine. So when this ladder comes, the door opens, and the molten metal is charged inside it. So the molten metal is fed into the mold, the cavity, through a very low pressure. And inside those cavities, the wheels are formed. After the casting process, there's a cooling happen, and the wheels go through X-ray test for the soundness of the cast. After the X-ray, the wheels go through sprue cutting. But firstly, what is that process? All the extra metal that is formed during the casting of the alloy wheels is removed and hence this extra metal is called a sprue. And from here, this is going through the heat treatment process. So what's this process essentially? So heat treatment process is to achieve the mechanical properties of the wheel. So now after we do the heat treatment, the wheel is ready for machining. So there the wheel comes, it is inspected loaded on the machine, there's a vertical machining that is happening uh -huh. and there's a radial turning that is happening. So machining is basically recognized uh, with the polish it has, no? Yeah, I just finished that. Ah, okay. yeah. That is the casting, that is the machining. See the difference? Yeah. So these are, you know, diamond tools which are used for cutting this. Yes. So it is finished with the machining. Every state has got a quality gate. So at each state, it is uh -huh. quality assured. If any wheel is not fit for the next operation, it is segregated there itself and there is a complete evaluation that happens uh -huh. on the quality, why it has got rejected. So as that whatever is being produced uh -huh. in the previous process is okay. We don't keep producing rejects in case there are any. After the machining, so we have the painting process. It's a three coat paint process. So the first process is called the PT process. PT is nothing but pre-treatment. Like you see, even in uh, at homes, the walls, they first sandpaper it and all of that. After this treatment has been done, it goes into a water dry off oven because if there is any water which is left, will impact the painting. And after the water dry off oven, it goes for the first coat of primer. You see, that is the arm which is spraying. You see, the wheels are rotating and the robotic arms have been programmed in a way that there is coverage. And this is working under a set temperature and a certain pressure inside the boots. Okay, after that base coat, there's a lacquer coat, which is a clear coat that gives a protective layer, also the required level of the gloss. And so talking about like, obviously we're surrounded by hundreds and thousands of these alloy rims here. How do you send it to your customers? Like what's the packaging process and distribution process from so here look like? So you've seen the packaging. We package them in individual pallets okay. based on the requirements of the customer on the quantity that they want. And then they are strapped with, you see the PVC covers which are there to secure, then palletized. Yeah. And in cases of some of the OEMs, they have their own logistics. Okay. So they send their vehicles and we have an e-material flow which is a milk run. So they pick it up from here. In case of customers like Hyundai, Kia and all, we have the warehouses mm -hmm. where we supply to them at the warehouse. Mm -hmm. And from the warehouse, the entire assembly happens and it goes to the plant. And that brings us to the end of our seventh step process of manufacturing alloy wheels at Rockman. After seeing all those steps in person, it really made me curious to the fact that with the urban population rising so rapidly in India and people preferring to rent and lease vehicles, how do you think this trend would impact automotive manufacturers like Rockman? Another thing that I think is really interesting is that electric vehicles accounted for 5% of the total vehicle sales in India as of September in 2023. But this number is predicted to reach more than 40% penetration in 2030. How do you think companies like Rockman and even other manufacturers in this space could adapt to this rapidly evolving market so that they could at least maintain their lead in this segment? And lastly, I hope you guys had fun watching this video and hopefully learned a few things along the way. We'll catch you guys very soon with another off-campus video and another business. Thanks for watching.